Hello everyone, welcome to Gate Academy. So in this video, I am going to tell you what are the different topics I will be covering in the subject electromagnetics and that is especially for the electrical engineering students. So uh, this subject is very very uh, important for the electrical students uh, to understand the different topics in their core subjects uh, like uh, machine and uh, uh, the transformer things but uh, uh, the weightage in the gate exam is few uh, comparatively less than the other core subjects so that's why the students uh, don't give the weightage to this subject but uh, uh, in the last year the there are many questions asked in this particular subject so you cannot ignore this subject if you want to get the rank under 10 under 50 then you don't want to ignore this subject so that's why uh, i am uh, going to uh, tell you that what are the different topics that you have to cover uh, to get the good marks in this subject and uh, uh, how to uh, prepare this subject in very less time uh, and according to that uh, I will be dealing with the different numericals uh, from the different topics and uh, up to the depth level we will solve the different questions and uh, what are the different questions that is asked in gate that type of question we will solve. So let us see what are the different topics that we are going to cover in this particular subject electromagnetics. So there are three particular chapters in this particular uh, subject. So electromagnetics is divided into three parts. Okay, the first one is the coordinate system and the Dell operator, and the second one is electrostatic, and the third one is the magnetostatic. Okay, so let's write first is your coordinate system and Dell operator. So this is the first chapter that I will discuss in this particular course. In the coordinate system, we will be having three types that is a Cartesian coordinate system, second one is cylindrical coordinate system. And third one is a spherical coordinate system. In all these three coordinate system, what are the different things that we are going to discuss is we will going to see the parameters related to this particular coordinate system. What are the different parameters like in Cartesian coordinate system x, y, z we will use, in the cylindrical coordinate system we will use rho phi and z and in spherical coordinate system r theta and phi. So these are the different parameters that is involved in this particular coordinate system. So that is known as the parameter and the range of this parameter and then we will see the differential length, differential surface. I am writing only the important topic that is uh, related to this particular coordinate system. There are many different things also that we will discuss uh, while we will, dis uh, we will be discussing this particular coordinate system like uh, uh, unit vectors we will discuss and uh, the interrelationship between this coordinate system that we will discuss that I am not writing here. Okay, so that is also included in this particular topics. So differential surface, differential volume, these are the different topics that we are going to discuss. Okay. Now in the Dell operator, so we are having the Dell operator, so in Dell operator we are having scalar, gradient of the scalar, gradient of a scalar, second one is curl of vector. Third one is divergence of vector and fourth one is Laplacian of a scalar and vector. So 
so these are the different topics that we will discuss in del operator and we will write some important points that is the conclusion that we get from this particular operators and how the numerical is asked from the that particular conclusions okay so this is the we are going to see the physical significance of these particular operators and we are going to see how it is applied to any vector or a scalar and from that we will come to some conclusion and according to that conclusion the question is asked so that is important so this is all about the coordinate system and del operator and after this the second part of this particular subject is electrostatic so in electrostatic we discuss about the static charges so the first topic is coulomb's law and electric field intensity coulomb's law and electric field intensity we will discuss now after that uh, we will discuss about the charge distribution how the charge is distributed in any uh, type of structure so charge distribution and this charge distribution we will see in the line charge surface charge or volume charge so these are the three different configuration in which we are going to see the charge distribution and apart from this we will also discuss the electric field because of this different charge distributions like the line infinite long line charge we will calculate the electric field intensity uh, for the infinite surface sheet we will calculate the electric field intensity so these are the different topics that we are going to cover under this topic now the third one is gauss law and their application so in this particular topic we will uh, derive the maxwell equation that is derived from the gauss law and how this gauss law is applied to calculate the electric field intensity at any point because of the different charge distribution and especially uh, in using the gauss law we will calculate the electric field intensity because of the spherical conductor and non conducting sphere so that is very important topic and the usually the question is asked from this particular specific uh, spherical conductor and non conducting sphere and after this we will calculate the potential or you can say voltage or potential difference work done and after this we will discuss about the capacitor so in capacitor we are having the three different types first one is known as coaxial capacitor and their series and parallel combination and uh, second one we will discuss about the spherical capacitor and third one is parallel plate capacitor so these are the three different types of capacitor in which the series and parallel combination is very very important for you and after this we will discuss about the method of images when the different charge configurations or the different charge distribution are placed about the perfect conducting surface then we will apply the method of image so how it is applied to any particular charge configuration and how do we calculate the electric field intensity and potential because of this uh, perfect conducting plane and the charge distribution we will see under this topic and then we are having electric boundary condition
So in electric boundary condition, we will see uh, how we can calculate the electric field intensity if in the one region we know about the electric field intensity and if it is uh, separated by some interface then how we can calculate the electric field intensity in the other region. And uh, there are two different dielectric medium, there may be a dielectric or conducting medium, there may be a conducting and free space. So in all these three different configurations or the uh, types or the interface we will discuss how do we calculate the electric field using this boundary condition. So these are the different topics that is going to discuss in electrostatic. Now the third part of this particular subject is magnetostatic. So first one is Biosevert's law. So in Biosevert's law, we will see how do we calculate the magnetic field intensity because of any current carrying conductor in magnetostatic we discuss about the moving charges. If the charge will move then the current will flow. So because of the current carrying conductor we will calculate the magnetic field intensity at different points. And after this Biosevert's law we will see the current distribution as in electrostatic we saw the charge distribution similarly in magnetostatic we are having a current distribution. So after this current distribution we will discuss the magnetic field intensity uh, at different points because of the different configurations like we will consider the circular loop, circular conductor you, will, you can say circular conductor, magnetic field intensity due to circular conductor and due to infinite sheet, infinite current sheet, infinite long wire so because of these three different configuration we will calculate the magnetic field intensity at different point. After this we will calculate magnetic field intensity using Ampere's law. So we will discuss Ampere's law and their application same as the Gauss law and their application. So in Ampere's law and their application we will calculate the Maxwell's equation again. So here we will derive the Maxwell equation which is derived using the Ampere's law and how it is applied to calculate the magnetic field intensity at different point because of this different current distribution. So we can calculate the magnetic field intensity because of the two ways. Uh, first one you can directly apply the Biot-Severs law that is the conventional method and the second one is Ampere's law you can calculate magnetic field intensity in very short time using this Ampere's law. So here we will calculate the magnetic field because of the solenoid, toroid and coaxial conductor. And we will also discuss the magnetic flux then we will also discuss about the magnetic scalar and vector potential then magnetic boundary condition. So the boundary condition purpose of the boundary condition is same as the electric boundary condition. Here we are having interface which is separating the two medium and if we know about the magnetic field intensity in one medium then we want to calculate the magnetic field intensity in other medium for that we will apply the magnetic boundary condition. then we will calculate the magnetic force and uh, Faraday's law and uh, your inductance 
so these are the different topics that we are going to discuss there are many different topics uh, under all this sub heading so uh, in this magnetic flux also we will discuss uh, about the magnetic field passing through the closed surface in the magnetic scalar and vector potential we will see how it is derived and how it is applied to any question magnetic boundary condition i have told you magnetic force uh, we are going to discuss in the magnetic force that uh, how much force it develops on the current element on the charge lorentz force equation if there are two different conductors then how the force will exert uh, into each other these are the different things we are going to discuss in magnetic force and faraday's law so in faraday's law also we are having the three different things uh, suppose a circular uh, conductor is placed then how much uh, uh, induced voltage is generated because of the faraday's law if the conductor is moving then how much uh, uh, induced emf is generated so there are other uh, topics also included in this particular headings so uh, i am not writing each and every topic but you have to understand that what are the different things which we are going to cover in this particular subject so these are all about the syllabus of the electromagnetics for the electrical engineering students so the weightage of this subject is bit less compared to the other subject but that is very uh, short in syllabus so you can easily cover it into 25 to 30 hours and you can get the very good marks in this particular subject and if you want to achieve the rank under 10 and under 50 then you have to prepare this subject thank you